What's up guys? Alright, <clears throat> we're on uh, installation day today and once again I'm dealing with really really crappy instructions from Road Armor and have to figure it out on my own. When you look at the instructions for the rear bumper install they give you these brackets all right <clears throat> and when you look at the the pictures which is once again I'm following the pictures as if I'm putting together IKEA furniture here um, when you're when you're looking at the pictures it shows that you know this bracket with this piece is facing the outside now it also shows that this little notch is supposed to go and I'm going to show you right here is supposed to go right under here and then it's supposed to bolt up somewhere over here the problem is that's not how that works that is ex that is not how that works at all um, see it all right so that's not how that bracket works the way that bracket works is it goes above it like so and you're using the OEM bolts up top to hold this in so we're gonna unplug those bolts and plug this in and you got let's see one two and you got one two three four hardware here one two three four hardware there that's eight okay now on step seven and I'm gonna show you that on the paper so once again, I'm just going to show you, um, point it out, I don't know if you guys can see it. Up here, this is the OEM bolting hardware for your trailer hitch. Uh, honestly, um, oh, before I forget, you guys didn't see this part. Before. It's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts that hold the rear bumper on. You unplug this from the trailer hitch because I have the... 3 pin connector and then the 7 pin connector for the trailer brake and regular trailer hitch. Unplug your your lights here, which I'm going to have to modify because they give you uh, lights that, that plug into the uh, new bumper. So you're going to have to cut and splice. So I will uh, show you that when we get to that step. Right now, um, back to what I was saying is number 7 which they also put this paper backwards. Sorry, I'm gonna have shadows. If you look at this, this shows the bracket going underneath the hitch receiver. Now, obviously this is a different hitch receiver. It's not, you know, it's it's a factory one, but it's for a different year or make model of the truck. It's not my truck hitch receiver. So it's just, we're figuring this out as we go along. Um, I do have a feeling I may have to trim or cut this out due to the weld, but I'm going to try to put it on and see how it works. So let's get um, started here with this. I'm going to grab some sockets. Uh, and obviously a uh, air gun. Oh. So the nut on the back end of the hitch is a 24. Um, I would honestly go through this video f that I'm doing for you guys first to make sure you kind of get all the tools I'm telling you to get. So you're not kind of just doing the job and then all of a sudden you got to keep running the auto zone or someplace to get a tool every single time you kind of have everything. Oh, my mistake. The bolts, the bolts are welded on. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't, it doesn't look like it's welded on, but it is. It's, it's welded on. All right, so you just need a, you just need a, like a 21 swivel on a half inch. And they'll come right out. All right. Now we're going to try to put the bracket in. Yeah. 
yeah it's not perfect I'm gonna I'm gonna try to grind away that little bit of uh, that little bit of uh, what you call it they got there a little weld I'm gonna I'm gonna grind that weld away so it'll fit better Think. Oh, let's see if this fits. Now. Oh, a lot better. All right. Now it's more like flush. So, what I'll do is to prevent just a little bit of rust. I'm gonna spray this with some black spray paint that I have. grinder out I'll do the other side also <clears throat> oh. the other side actually doesn't even really have a, a weld on the outside so I think we're all right all right time to reinstall Show you guys end result that's what it looks like by the way there are alignment pins here they tell you to cut them off I will listen to them I, I shaved mine down and that's why I, I painted this because I was I cut it and it shows bare metal I don't want it to rust so I trimmed those down uh, now we're gonna do the other side Also guys, remember do one side at a time. Uh, I think if you just remove both sides, nothing should happen because your hitch is held in by two more bolts underneath. But, better to be safe than sorry. I'd rather just do one side at a time and nothing comes out on alignment either. 
atenção. Ugga duggas and it's tight. That's a joke from my mechanic friends there. Alright, so now I'm gonna show you what it looks like. That's that's there. Everything's kind of lined up. Um, as you can see, like I said, this this cutout's supposed to be underneath it, but it fits above it. I mean that's just how my hitch is. Um, Maybe, maybe on the newer models, once again, my trucks are 2012, so maybe on the newer models, it's, uh, on the newer model, it's a little different. The, the hitches could be designed a little different, not entirely sure, so don't uh, take my word for it. Um, it doesn't cost you anything to honestly just pull the rear bumper off and look at what you got and go from there. Um, everything seems pretty solid, pretty tight. So, I'm going to see how much this rear bumper really kind of weighs and see if I can knock it out myself. But before I do that, I'm going to probably tackle the, uh, the lights here. The, fun the funny thing is, they don't even tell you anything about the lights. And um, just on a side note, so you guys know, I uh, the card it, it came on a like almost like a two skid pallet. And uh, what I did is I took the cardboard that surrounded the pallet, I cut it, and I'm using it as a platform for me to sit outside on the ground. Actually, kind of helps. I laid out all my. Uh, you can see here, kind of. Oops. I laid out all my uh, nuts and bolts and hardware here where I can see it, see everything. So. Let's take a, I'm gonna open up these lights and take a look at them. got two wires, obviously power and ground. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't know which is power, which is ground. And to top it off, they've they sort of glued the light down into this, into this thing. So that quite doesn't really make sense. If you have to replace these lights, God forbid it goes out. Like, what do you do? Hey guys, all right, so <clears throat> these are the rear license plate lights. I did talk about this earlier with uh, the other, you know, with the, when we were installing the rear bumper. Um, ideally, I'm not crazy about it. Thought it'd be something that looks just a little better, but um, it is what it is. These screws come with the uh, what you call it come with the uh, the kit for your rear bumper so this is what will hold it to the rear bumper itself I am gonna do what I did earlier in the video with the other connectors I'm gonna just use these pieces right here sorry use these pieces right here I'm gonna clip them on solder them and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side and we're gonna be using these connectors right here
these are just uh, two wire connectors so that's all I need they're just license plate lights and if I ever have to replace these pop them out of here you know replace it with the other ones and then uh, we'll be good to go so you don't need to see me do this all we're doing is literally putting these connectors on soldering it and it's done and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the license plate lights there and then hook it all up Hey guys, so <clears throat> here's what I've done so far. I um, I pulled out my uh, license plate uh, connector. So all you do is you stick a small screwdriver in there, something like this, and you pry it forward. And then you're gonna need this type of tool. I really don't know what it's called. It's like a, it's almost like a multi-purpose electrical tool, I guess you could say. You probably get this off of Amazon, and you'll stick it in here and you'll compress these square connectors and then you just kind of pull them out from the back end um, <clears throat> makes it easier to trim the wire as best as you can close enough so you don't have to trim a whole lot of it off but in my case I'm gonna probably trim back some more so. I want to save these. That's the only reason I did this is because I want to. I want to save these. Um, you can probably get these same little square connectors here. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Once again, Amazon. Everything is Amazon these days. And um, <clears throat> make this work again for some other application that you may need it down the line. So never hurts. This is what you're kind of looking at when you pull them out. And all I did is I opened up these little connectors here and uh, I'm gonna just snip the wires here and then I'm gonna <coughs> cut the shielding off that's what I did on that side Now you're probably asking, how do you know which is power, which is ground? Mm -hmm. um, there's only two wires here. It's a white wire and a black wire. Nine times out of ten, the black wire is ground. So, we're just going to plug it in and... Now, all in all, I've spent about, uh, let's see, I've spent about six days doing this project, um, and it's split between two weekends. Last weekend, it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it was, and it's this weekend, which is Friday, Saturday, I'd probably say, uh, actually five days, not really six, because I'm hoping to finish everything today, so... I'm gonna get these lights working, gonna get the reverse lights working, and then I'm gonna get the uh, air compressor kit bolted on and mounted and everything plumbed and done, and my truck will be good to go. I'd have to trim back the sheathing just a little bit. Let's see if I can do this. So, there you go, it's hooked up, turned on, and it works. Alright guys, I got the tail light out, it's just two simple bolts on the side over here, they're Torx, and it's a uh, Torx number 25. I would highly suggest getting yourself a torque set. Um, it's a simple power and ground here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim back this wiring. Alright, I'm going to trim back enough that you can put two clips on this. Alright. 
Alright, I don't have enough clips, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim back more. Alright, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to actually if I tap one Alright guys, so using a pair of alligator clips I tested my theory out This is power on ground, red and black Two wires, power on ground, white and black here I hooked them all up, light lit up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just uh, we're just gonna splice into it. We're gonna I'm gonna cut these, trim these, and using the soldering gun, solder them in and make it uh, one piece. So I'm gonna get everything together now. So what I'm doing here is I'm just wrapping the wire with some uh, electrical tape because as it's when I slip it through here, this is all metal. There's nothing to really protect it from being cut up as the truck drives down the road. So, we're going to protect it with a little bit of this. And then, what I'm probably going to do is use the. I might use the uh, plastic wire covering that they use on most vehicles that you can get at AutoZone or online and I'm going to probably put that on here so that's an added protection. I did that on the reverse lights I added that plastic covering even though the reverse lights have a tough rubber outer coating for the wires it's just to keep it you know from getting cut up and when you're doing wiring, just some advice. Plan out exactly where you want the wires to go, uh, the route they're going to take. Because it, um, it can make all the difference between having a, you know, a short happening because the wires rub against the metal and then also it just shorts out. So, we've got this. here, power on ground, slip that back through. Literally you can just follow where these tail light wires go through in here. I twist these and then solder them together. Now I cut uh, I've cut and stripped these wires here as well. This is my reverse mm -hmm. light.
I know this is not the right way to solder, but for me it's the faster way of doing it rather than sitting here trying to get this thing to melt and all right and now I got my heat shrink which is a little bigger but that's okay because it's gonna hold everything together and like the name implies heat shrink it's gonna get down to size and I'll hold these wires together plus I'm also gonna rewrap this in electrical tape so and we will double check before I put the housing and everything back together I will double check to make sure that this is gonna happen for those that have the LED tail lights, I, I really have no experience in that whatsoever. Um, my best bet is I imagine it's one giant connector. And with that you're going to have to get either a multimeter or a, what you call it, or some sort of like a test light that you can just ground. And then you're going to have to have someone sit in the truck and put the reverse lights on on and off I guess and you'll be able to tell which one is your reverse lights because usually with the LEDs they, they kind of give you just one giant connector which is mine which are not the LEDs okay, that's there. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side Alright, okay, the little hiccup I just faced was I thought I had the wires tightly wound together and they ended up just coming apart. So using the, the solder to hold it. If it does end up coming back out, I'll be redoing this, but a little hole. Alright, so now we're going to test this out. Uh, I'm going to turn the... I'm not turning the truck fully on. I'm just going to turn it to the... What is it? The, on, the, the position before run. And then I have my e-brake on. And I'll throw it in reverse and then come back here and check it.
pick up. I forgot to plug the wire back in. So I'll show you guys. Boom. That is bright. Alright. So that's how we're doing that. I'm gonna do the other side, you don't I'm not gonna show you that again. We'll do the other side and then we'll be all set. Hey guys. Uh just wanna give you some final notes on this build that we did. Um just gathering my thoughts for a sec here. So it's been a very troublesome build. Uh I've got cuts, bruises, scrapes, including hurting my eye from trying to accomplish everything I needed to get done on this truck. I got the air compressor system in. <clears throat> I've wired everything up, I've tested everything, it all works. I've gotten all my leaks sorted out from the air system. Um, the only downside is, and I think this might have been from the accident, the air solenoid valves that make the air horns work, one of them is sticking open after you hit the horns. So I'm just going to order a new set and put that in. Overall, I will still stick with what I'm going to say is if you're a DIY guy and you know you can change your oil on the weekends and maybe rotate your tires, I'd still highly suggest taking this to a professional shop because there's a lot that has to be done that the average man at home doesn't have the tools for. And if you <clears throat> if you still want to go ahead, you know, and, and do it yourself, just be weary. You're going to be running a lot to, you know, AutoZone and Home Depot to get what you need. Um, whereas I have everything on hand because <clears throat> I've done, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, I've done these projects over the years and it's, I've accumulated quite a bit of tools. Um... I would highly suggest going through this video first and gathering all the tools that I'm talking about throughout the video so that if you do want to take it on yourself you're well prepared. Uh, why I've gotten all the wiring sorted out everything's kinda laid nice and neat um, I did promise you guys earlier in the video I would show you the spot for the thing for the distribution block. So this is the distribution block I had talked about earlier in the video. So that is there. You got power here. I managed to put the ground to right here instead of going all the way back to the battery. Um, this number which we had ta taken off earlier in the video just finished. I just put that on today. As you can see this is what the intimidated guard looks like with the hood open and this folded up. It's not been an easy journey, I would say. Um, I'm going to show you the rear. The rear lights look awesome. One thing I didn't mention in an earlier video when I was doing the rear is I loosened up because I have Flowmaster exhaust. I did loosen up the tips and I was able to squeeze them. I mean, not squeeze them, sorry, push them, or pull them in my case, towards the rear bumper. Otherwise, they were sitting too far in and it looked really weird. So, I had to make sure I aligned that up. Um, what else can I tell you? <clears throat> the front fog lights are super bright and pretty awesome. I'm going to show you when I close the hood one of the downsides of this a little bit. So, as I come here to close the hood, it rubs right there, as you can see. So, I have to kind of push my hood in just a little bit, and then it closes. I decided not to go, I mean, I live in New York, and one of the things in New York is you have to have a front license plate. 
and I decided not to go with a front license plate. We'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'll, I'll probably do a follow-up if anything comes of it. But like I said, I don't drive this truck every day to work. I don't drive it every day, period. Uh, once in a blue moon to work, once in a blue moon running around town. So, to be honest, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of trouble from the cops. And it's a pretty unique enough truck that there's no other Ram like it. Um, as I told you, three-tone hood, orange, black, red. Um, the tires are <clears throat> 37 by 12 and a half for 20s with a 20 by 10 offset, I believe. As you can see, there's a gap here where the bump where the bumper is supposed to meet the fender. I mean, honestly, if done right, you shouldn't have those body line gaps. It should fit perfectly to the truck. And like I said, you know, it's not it's not perfect. Um, would I still go with this bumper if I knew all of this stuff? Probably, because I love the way it looks. I love the Intimidator Guard. I think it just looks fantastic. And as mentioned earlier, I thought this was going to be a very heavy bumper sitting on the truck. But honestly, I've not noticed a sag. And to me, it seems like it holds the weight just fine. So I have really no complaints. So that's my, um, that's my little recap. Um, I hope you guys enjoy my YouTube video. If you do... You know, subscribe. I will have other projects going on. Um, I will do a short YouTube tutorial for those of you that do want to go with the aftermarket sports hood that's a fiberglass, which is a lighter weight. Um, I didn't do the spray nozzles in the hood. I actually mo made my own kit using, uh, using washers that I got online from AutoZone and some tubing. I was able to get spray nozzles that fit to the wiper blades so I could you know use them to when I hit the windshield washer it'll it works that way I will do a video on that later on I am part of a, I think it's called Ram Forms where I made a whole post about this I will probably do another video where it goes in depth about the air horns um, how I made the kit, what I used. Um, as far as I can tell you right now, the kit is a heavy duty via air compressor kit that I got from eBay. Um, so stay tuned.